Hey horror fans, welcome back to Room 237. Come back with another uh, collection video. So, this is something I've been putting off for a while, but I think I finally have enough examples. Um, I've been wanting to do my Italian horror giallo exploitation film collection for some time, and now I'm finally going to get to it. I'm not going to say how many I have, but I'm just going to dive into it. Um, I have three different stacks here. I have Lucio Fulci, Dario Argento, and then a, a miscellaneous. So, and right off the bat, I know I'm missing some very important examples, which I'll get to at the end. But, um, getting right into it, we're going to start with Lucio Fulci, because he's my favorite Italian director. And this is a giallo film he did that I really enjoy. This is one of his earlier films, and that is Don't Torture a Duckling. He actually had did one before this called uh, Lizard and a Woman's Skin, which I used to own. I used to own Lizard and a Woman's Skin, this, and a few other ones, but they were all stolen a few years ago. So I've been working on trying to get them back, or buying them back, so I have this one. Don't Torture a Duckling is one of my favorite Giallo films. I really like it. Then my favorite Fulci film, Zombie. I've already done a review for that. Most of the Fulci films I've already done reviews for. Like City of the Living Dead. The Beyond. This one I have not done yet, but that is The Black Cat. Most of these Italian films I have not seen in years, like probably at least six years, so that's why I've been re-watching them for a review them. Black Cat, I, I remember being kind of boring, but I'm willing to give it another shot. House by the Cemetery, I just did a video for it last night. And then... This is one of the many that says most controversial horror film ever made. Many of them say that. This is probably his sleaziest and most brutal Jallo film, and that is The New York Ripper. But I do like this one a lot, too. So I know that's all I have for Fulci, but you know I know I'm missing still Lizard Woman Skin, Cat in the Brain, Manhattan Baby, Murder Rock, The Psychic. Um... There's a lot that I'm missing from a lot of people, but I'm pretty happy with the collection I have so far. So my second favorite Italian filmmaker, is, Italian filmmaker, excuse me, is Dario Argento. He's different than Pulci, and for very different reasons. Once I start reviewing his films, I'll get into that. His actually Argento, I think, is really no. He's known more for Giallo than Pulci is. But this was his directorial debut, and that is The Bird with the Crystal Plumage. I remember really liking this movie. Cat and Nine Tails, I don't really remember too much about. I am missing Four Flies on Grey Velvet, I know. But of course, I do have to have Deep Red. Many consider this the greatest Jallo ever made. Then, of course, you know, probably his most popular film and my favorite by him, Suspiria. This was one that was also stolen. I just got this back. I wasn't going to get the Blu-ray. The place I go has had the DVD for a long time. Finally went to go get it. Someone bought it, so I had to get the Blu-ray. And I had to get one with, the ori with this original cover, too, because I love that cover. We have Inferno, which I did enjoy at part. It was kind of confusing, but I did enjoy it. I am going to re-watch all of these before I review them. Uh, a Tenebrae, which I got recently. I, I do remember liking it. I, I fell asleep, not because it's boring, just because I'm working my ass off lately. So I'll have to re-watch this, but Tenebrae is one I've wanted for a very long time. Um, I don't like the cover to this film, but it was much cheaper to get it this way, so I did. 
Oh, actually, you know what? I am going to do this. If I put the thing with the chapters on the inside, I can make my own cover. A phenomena. This is the 110 minute version, which I guess is not the completely watered down Creepers. It's also known as Creepers. If you get the film called Creepers, that's the bad version. But I guess the 110, uh, 110 minute version doesn't cut out the gore, the violence, just the beginning and the ending sequences. Uh, yeah, that actually does look a lot better with this cover on it. So uh, I'm going to keep it like that. And the last one I have that's directed by him, it, this is one of the first Jallos I ever saw. That is Opera. I do like Opera. So now we're just getting into the more or less random ones by random people. Uh, first, of course, I gotta talk about Mario Bava. One of his first films, Blood and Black Lace. Already done a review for that. And of course, Bay of Blood, aka Twitch of the Death Nerve. I've already done a review for this as well. Again, it took me a long time to find out that Twitch of the Death Nerve and Bay of Blood was the same film. I was always looking for Twitch of the Death Nerve. So I found that they were the same film and that Bay of Blood was easy to get. Definitely went out and snagged, snagged that. Excuse me. That's all I have for Baba. I know that's kind of embarrassing. Like, I know there's Kill Baby Kill, Black Sunday, Black Sabbath, um... Uh, Hatchet for the Honeymoon. A whole list of films by Baba. And then this is a two-pack, but the second one is American. I've already reviewed both of these, and that is Ruggiero Diodato's House on the Edge of the Park. One of the few films that are like an Italian version of Last House on the Left. I did like this movie, though. And then one of another one of my favorite Italian films... Also by Ruggiero Diodato, Cannibal Holocaust. This is one that you cannot do an Italian horror movie collection without Cannibal Holocaust. Some people could say the same about Cannibal Ferox, Cannibal Man, anything with the title Cannibal in it. This is the only one I own. They're, they're kind of hard to find and they're a little expensive. So, And I got this back in high school. This is another one that got stolen years ago that I had to re-get. Now I finally have it back. This is the only Sergio Martino film I have, but it's a good one, and that is Torso. I actually think I saw this before, Opera. This really helped get my mind what a giallo is all about. I, I really like this movie. This one says Dario Argento presents, but it's a Lamberto Bava film, and that is Demons. I know there's a Demons 2. I have not seen this yet. I'm going to give this a watch at some point. I've, I've heard the premise, and it sounds pretty interesting. I know when it comes to Italian horror, that's up there with fan favorites. This is one I really do not remember, but Horror View... Dot com says this is the best giallo ever made and that is black belly of the tarantula i do remember liking it though this one i wasn't the biggest fan of because i mean see if it says on the back it has some of the titles this is night train murders released as second house on the left new house on the left terror train and that's just a handful. This movie's got a ton of House on the Left titles, related titles. And it essentially is almost the same movie, just on a train. I don't remember being that great. It does have a great song in the opening credits, though. Okay, Italian move, horror movies always have great, nice, pretty songs in it. This one I thought was kind of weird. Uh... Uh, well, I'll say what it is first. The Forbidden Photos of a Lady Above Suspicion. 
from what I remember, because, again, years since I've seen I went through an Italian phase about six or seven years ago when I got most of these, and then I quickly got into something else, and so I kind of stopped getting them for a while. So I don't remember most of these, but this one, I think this one's more about blackmail than murder. I could be wrong, though. And yeah, most of these are Blue Underground releases. This one, I think, is actually widely considered more of a slasher film than, um, than a giallo, like an Italian slasher, and that is Stage Fright. I know a lot of people like this one, too. Oh, I did not realize this was by Lamberto Bava either, because it's been a long time since I've looked at this movie. That is A Blade in the Dark. Again, don't remember shit from this. And then the last one I'll share that I have is this one I do want to give a second watch. Because you know, I don't remember anything. I think I was actually pretty stoned last time I watched this years ago, and that is... Nightmare City, which I actually did not buy this as an Italian, like part of my Italian collection. I bought this part of my zombie collection and just never realized it was a Umberto Lenzi film. And Nightmare City. But again, you know, I know I'm missing, God, countless, countless Italian films. But, you know, I'm I'm pretty proud of this collection. Um, I do plan on doing more reviews on all of these in the sooner-to-come days, going back and forth between these and slasher films. Or if anybody has any requests, you know, I'd be more than happy to take requests. I would just have to watch them again uh, before I do it, so it might take a little bit of time, but... Um, that is my Italian giallo exploitation film collection, so hope you liked it. Uh, hope you don't think it's, uh, I will consider this a novice collection, but hopefully you don't think it's too small. <laughs> but for Room 237, I'm out. Thank you.